What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm back with another Omnibus haul, and man, I'm excited about this one. We got some oversized hardcovers, a Spider-Man Omnibus, we got an Absolute Edition, and two custom-bound Omnibus, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so uh, I'm reading Invincible by uh, Robert Kirkman, and I have the three library editions, which are like Absolute uh, sized formats. They collect two oversized hardcovers in each volume. So the three volumes uh, of the library editions basically collect one through six of the oversized hardcovers. They already uh, said they are not going to finish this run in those library editions, so I don't really recommend to buy them because now I have library editions one through three with the OHCs seven through twelve. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm in like the middle of the second library edition right now. It's a cool story. I'm going to do a review on it. I don't really want to spoil it now, but these oversized hardcovers are about $40 each. We'll go ahead and flip through some of the artwork. This was basically Robert Kirkman's book before he started Walking Dead. And a lot of people like this because it's kind of a realistic superhero book, uh, which we've seen a few times, an overpowered Superman. Again, I don't, I don't want to get into it too much. We'll wait for the review. But... Yeah, like for instance, this covers uh, issues 71 through 84, so the three library editions collect 1 through 70. Let's flip through and take a look at Invincible. Alright, so here's a quick look at uh, Volume 7. I probably won't go through all the other volumes because it's all the same kind of stuff, but you have a dust jacket with a black hardcover. Here's the back. Some embossed uh, logos and all that good stuff. Invincible Ultimate Collection. Kind of a shame they didn't continue the library editions because it kind of messes up the feng shui of what I got going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. So the art is kind of like on par with what you would think from most image titles. I guess what's interesting about this, it's an independent book, but it's still a superhero book. So you hear me talk about that a lot. Like most independent books aren't superhero books. They're usually like, you know, uh, scenario-based uh, stories. But yeah, I do like the book. I don't want to, I'm, I'm almost spoiling myself here, jumping ahead. But most people who've read Invincible will tell you that you should read it and that it's a great read. I'm not really there yet. I'm, I'm not really sold on that, um, which is probably why I stopped reading it. Uh, but also I'm reading other things. So anyway, I'll finish reading it. So here's what the whole run of Invincible looks like with the three library editions and the uh, six oversized hardcovers. Like I said, the library editions are oversized. I'm actually reading volume two right now. So this is what volume two looks like next to the uh, other ones. So if you're gonna collect this whole run, you're probably best off <clears throat> getting all the OHCs so that it'll match and it'll probably be a little bit more manageable to read as well. So I just thought I'd share that with y'all. So this does complete the 144 issue run. All right, next up, man. So happy that they're continuing with uh, these volumes. This is volume four of The Amazing Spider-Man. This is by Stan Lee, Jerry Conway, John Romita, Gil Kane, Ross Andrew. It collects <clears throat> Amazing Spider-Man 105 through 142. So this is where we get the death of Gwen Stacy, the death of the Green Goblin. This is where we get the first appearance of Punisher, uh, amongst other things. We'll take a look at the back and you guys will see what it collects, but it's cool because now we have issues 1 through 142 of Amazing Spider-Man, and I think it would take like two more omnibus to catch up to the Roger Stern omnibus, and that was kind of like what got me into collecting these, to get all of the, you know, the entire run collected in like this type of format. So this is what they call the DM variant or the direct market variant. Actually, I'll show a shot with all four omnibus because... I always go for the direct market variants, which is uh, the cover of one of the actual issues inside. This is from issue 135, which is the second appearance of Punisher. I always question why they use this cover and not like ASM 121 or 122 or 129. I guess they didn't use 129 because that's more of a Punisher cover. But at least like the Turning Point cover or that Green Goblin cover, they should have done, man. I just made a post in uh, our Facebook group, Geminites, on how much I hated the regular cover of this. It was by Frank Cho, who's a great artist, 
But that cover is whack as hell, man. That's a terrible cover. Um, the regular covers for Volume 1 and 2 were the Alex Ross versions of the same cover of uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 and ASM 39. Uh, and then with Volume 3 and 4, they just did like some random regular cover. And the DM was, um, like I said, one of the issues from the book. Anyway, this has a $125 cover price. It does also collect Giant Size Superheroes 1 and Marvel Superheroes 14. Let's take a look at Volume 4 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Alright, so yeah, I just always was a fan of the dust jacket artwork matching the material that's inside. That's why I never went for those regular covers. And I always really went hard to get the, uh, the direct market variants. You have some uh, talking about the books and how important it was for them to kill Gwen Stacy at the time. I think most Spider-Man fans know the story that they did this while Stan Lee was on vacation. And, you know, it was never his plan to kill Gwen Stacy. But they did it anyway. And here's what the book collects. See, being like a key issue collector, like, immediately I'm just drawn to 121, 122, 129, 135 a little bit. I mean... Second appearance of Punisher. They kept it classy to match the other Silver Age omnibus. Although this is really getting into Bronze Age, actually. 70s stuff. I always like this cover as well. Little table of contents. There you go. It's really nice how you have like this cleaned up art. It's big. It's it looks really good. I really like um, Bronze Age, especially Spider Man with John Romita Senior. Let's take a look at like the death of Gwen Stacy real quick. I took pictures of this and I, uh, I posted it in the group. Just some iconic panels. 118, 120. So even before the issue, they have like a little interview right here. Talking about the storyline turning point with Jerry Conway. Here's the issue. Right here's the death of Gwen Stacy. The famous br uh, bridge. And you get Death of Green, Green Goblin. Dope splash page, too. Here you go. They took that right out of the books for the first Spider Man movie. It was the first appearance of the Punisher and the Jackal. I always liked the Jackal because, like, my my kid Spider-Man stuff was like the Clone Saga. All right, so I was talking about the regular cover. I guess I should show that. Here you go. I got some cool extras. So here's the regular cover of the dust jacket. It's by Frank Cho, which is a great artist, but man, doesn't just doesn't look like a Spider-Man book to me. I'm glad they had another option. Here's just a nice shot of the four Amazing Spider-Man omnibus, all the direct market variant covers. I still have the first print of Volume One, so it's that big, fat, thick book, <laughs> thick AF. As the kids say. Yeah, just kind of wanted to get those all in frame. I love how they look with the original covers, matching the material on the inside. Can't beat it. <clears throat> Alright guys, super excited for these next two books. So these are my first ever 
custom bound omnibus I purchased uh, through somebody on Facebook. They hit me up. They're like, yo, Jim, you want to buy these or what? And I, the one thing I always disliked about custom bound omnibus is that usually they're bound off of regular comic issues, which are not the same height as your typical omnibus. But these two binds were made out of oversized hardcovers, making them basically the same size as an omnibus. So I thought that was awesome. And what he really caught my eye with this book, this is Uncanny X-Men Volume 3. This is uh, the fir one of the first runs I picked up when I got back into comics. I, I went to the comic shop and I was like, oh shoot, Uncanny X-Men has a, n a new number one issue. This is a new volume. It you know, sounded like a good jumping on point. So this uh, took place right after X-Men Schism and the X title split into two. Wolverine and the X-Men by Jason Aaron, which there is an omnibus for as well. And this one by Kieran Gillen. So this was cool. This was like what was happening with the other side of the team during Wolverine versus uh, Wolverine and the X-Men. And then it came together for the Marvel event Avengers vs. X-Men, which I was back into the game. I was picking up every variant, every tie-in and, and all of that. Uh, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart. So this has a dust jacket, as you can see, just like a regular omnibus. It's made to look and match with the others. The actual hardcover looks a little bit more square than the Marvel releases, but, I mean, it's close enough. Both of these books look a little dirty. I don't know what happened to them, but we'll, we'll take a close look at them. I opened them up, and you can see you get a good eye with the ribbon. Um, this page is a little messed up. But, um, yeah, so the binding is good. And it's really cool because these are like one of a kinds, really. I mean, there is not an official release for these. And I think it's going to go great with the collection. It's going to lead me down a dark path of custom binding my own stuff. Which I really want to do my three Superior Spider-Man OHCs and make a, a Superior Spider-Man Omnibus. I think that would be awesome. So, uh, I've actually already been in contact with people to do that. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at this custom Uncanny X-Men by Kieran Gillen, or otherwise known as Volume 3, Custom Omni. There's no cover price, by the way, because <laughs> it's not for sale. Alright, so the front of the dust jacket here, here's the inside flap. They designed it to look, like I said, just like a regular Marvel released Omnibus. Then we get the back, also with all the covers that are contained. The end of Utopia. It collects Uncanny X Men 526 through 544, 534.1, Sword 1 through 5, Uncanny X Men Volume 2 1 through 10, and X Men Regenesis number 1. So I guess, it, I guess it's Uncanny X-Men Volume 2. I thought it was Volume 3. I guess it's 2. Alright. Here's the back of the actual hardcover. Here goes the spine. And the front. That's cool. You got Celestials. So, you know, it's coming from an oversized hardcover. So it's going to look just like a regular release. Danger, Emma Frost, Wolverine, so very cool man, first custom Omni, you can see how it lays flat with very little to no gutter loss. I love the Colossus with the Juggernaut stuff, with this Crystal of Sidorak or whatever. Alright, next up, the other custom omnibus from this haul is Fantastic Four by Mark Millar. This I thought was really cool too because it collects... Uh, Marvel 1985 issues 1 through 6 
and Fantastic Four 554 through 569, and Fantastic Four 1 through 4. This basically uh, collects all the issues between the Mark Wade omnibus and the Jonathan Hickman omnibus. So now you you have that whole run. Uh, this is Fantastic Four by Mark Millar. I haven't read this run, but I've read like those two I just mentioned. I read before and after it, so I don't know. Uh, I'll probably jump into this one day. It was designed to match the Jonathan Hickman omnibus with the spine and with how the actual hardcover looks. So I thought that was really uh, a really nice touch. And uh, just like the X-Men one, man, an awesome book to add to the collection. And I think what I'll do is I'll show you guys what it looks like with the other Fantastic Four Omnis. You can get an idea. Uh, and, of course, we'll do the aerial view. But, uh, yeah, good binding on this as well, as you can see. And uh, we'll show you up close. No gutter loss. Nice, good ribbon stretch in there. And, uh, yeah, man, super happy with these. Did you raise your hand? Wonder, Did you raise your hand? I want to ask you a question. Ask me a question. If they came out with a legitimate one of those, would you replace it? Yeah, it would, that would suck. If they came out with a legitimate one, if they printed that exact same book, you would get Yeah, I would get the official release. Okay. The, the, the point of Custom Omnibus is you want to try to buy something that Marvel probably wouldn't do, which is kind of risky with uh, Superior Spider-Man. And the Fantastic Four Custom Bound Omnibus, Mark Millar, Brian Hitch, Tommy Lee Edwards... Again, you have all the issues, the covers that it collects, which I love when they do that. So apparently others love that as well. So because it's a custom, you got no barcode, you got no price, uh, cover price. Like I mentioned, you got the all navy blue to match the Hickman stuff. I'm not familiar with this Marvel 1985 run. I guess it all ties in. That's a nice page right there, huh? So here's a look at the custom Mark Millar omnibus next to the two Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman. As you can see, they're designed to, to match. Here you have them with the spines. Color's not exactly on point, but you get the idea. Again, the navy hardcovers kind of designed to match. They're not exactly the same, but, you know, they match. All right, last up, we have the Absolute Batman, The Black Mirror, not to be confused with this TV show that's out. This is by Scott Snyder. I don't know anything about this run except for this is Detective Comics 880, which is like a sought-out issue for, like, CGC comic collectors. I don't really know why. But this is like an 11 issue run that I figured I might as well knock this out real quick and drop a little review review vizzle on it. <laughs> but um, nice oversized artwork. Scott Snyder, probably one of the best uh, Batman writers of all time. He's definitely up there in the greats. And, uh, you know, like somebody once told me, if they made an absolute about it, it's got to be good, right? So let's check it out and uh, take a look at the book. By the way, this one has a $100 cover price, but you know how we get them 50% off, bruh. Here we go. So that's the cover for Detective Comics 880. Got a pretty plain spine. Here's the back. That's the slipcase. So here's the actual hardcover. 
the front and its spine. So pretty plain looking Omni. I mean, absolute. It looks like some something I can knock out pretty quickly and drop a review. All right, guys, that's the haul for today. Kind of like an old school gem haul, man, with a ton of books. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Shoot me any questions. I know there's going to be a ton of questions about the custom bound omnibus. I don't know if I, I, I mentioned it or not, but I didn't have these custom bound. I, I bought them. Somebody already did all the hard work. But uh, maybe I'll kind of document a video on getting one done and uh, do something like that. Let me know what you think about the books in the comments below. Drop that like on the way out. And make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're dropping daily content every day. Stay minty fresh. Peace.